What is up guys, Mac Speed coming at ya. Very spicy episode today, digging into the real straight dope as far as whether or not powder coating your slugs is going to make a difference for you FPS and FPE wise in the hats on blitz. Let's get right into this. These will be the uncoated factory finish that you would get if you were to purchase these from the manufacturer. And fire. 722 velocity. ERR3. Seven two five velocity. Seven two seven velocity. Seven two four for the final shot. Second five shot test will be these nice powder coated slugs of the same exact variety. Fire. Seven six one with the same exact round. Seven six zero one FPS spread first two shots. Duplicate. Oh my goodness, we are getting good results. This is crazy. I am absolutely impressed so far. Like little kid impressed. Seven five seven. Seven five six. Guys, that is super, super, super consistent. Wow. All right, guys, I think a very interesting test to go ahead and compare this one step further would be to go ahead and take one of our powder coated rounds and one of our non powder coated rounds and go ahead and compare the results in this block of ballistic gel guys we have one block of ballistic gel so we have effectively one chance to get this right let's get right into it uncoated fire i am so happy to see that round contained within that ballistic gel you have no idea how happy I am to see that round contained. It looks like it's done a little spin move backwards. Definitely a very interesting piece of information in front of us, and I am absolutely excited to get into the slow motion right now.
All right, guys, as you did see, we did go ahead and flip our one block of ballistic gel over to the other side where we hopefully have a fresh trajectory and hopefully are able to capture that round once again in the ballistic gel. Now, based on the fact that this made almost, you know, roughly just based on rough estimates, five foot pounds more than the uncoated slug, I'm interested to see if this block is gonna hold it. Let's get right into it, guys. Powder coated, 36 grain, fire. Oh, it did not contain it. And additionally, look at that, the trajectory did not cross. I do not believe, well, maybe it might have very slightly, but it does not look to have impacted the wound channel, guys. I heard the round, I heard the round exit the block. Here it is. Oh, look at that. Look at that splash of green. Look, I'm taking you guys off the tripod for this. I hope the camera is able to pick up how much of a vivid green splash is on the absolute surface of this ballistic gel. Look at the round recovered. And I think that that deformation there honestly has to do with hitting the wood behind it. Um, and then look at that green splash. Look at how much powder coat was still retained on the round after splashing that much onto the ballistic block, guys. That means it's staying on the round until it hits the target and not coming off in your barrel. This is a good sign and has been a great test all the way around. Not only did we validate some energy by going ahead and containing one round while seeing another round of the exact same weight yet powder coated blow all the way through, but we also saw it on the chronograph, guys. So I feel like this is corroborated evidence and a very good test all the way around. Let's get back to the review bench and talk about what we learned. All right, gentlemen, I'll be totally 100% transparent with you and genuine at this point. I did not expect the powder coating to make any measurable difference whatsoever on the chronograph, let alone a block of ballistic gel, guys. This test, blew me away. I had never done any testing of the powder coated velocities before this test, nor had I been able to successfully make more than 40 foot pounds of energy with a slug. Not only did we make more than 40 foot pounds of energy with an uncoated slug, guys, but we made the better part of 50 foot pounds of energy with an untuned, unmodified 25 caliber blitz after they were powder coated. This leaves a lot of questions. What's going on here? Is it the diameter of the 249 slug that's increasing the sealing surface against the barrel? Is it the fact that the powder coating may act like Teflon in this case and more smoothly slide the slug out of the bore of the barrel? I don't know. I'm not a chemist. I'm not a physicist. I'm not any of these highly educated things. I'm just a dude. So I think the only way that I can get a further understanding of these at this point is to go ahead and use these tools that G-Man has so graciously donated to our channel, guys. Let's see what the actual end diameter was on these powder coated slugs versus the uncoated slugs and then set both of them on the scale and see if we've made any difference mass wise. Let's go ahead and get both of these on the scale and see if there's any difference in mass between the two of them. fluctuating between 35.8 and 36.0 grains. And our powder coated round. Very solidly sitting on 36.2 grains. So it's possible that the actual weight of the powder coat may be adding a slight amount of mass to this. We are now fluctuating between 36.0 and 36.2, as opposed to 35.8 and 36.0. So I definitely think that there is a quantifiable amount of small mass added to these rounds just by this process. Let's get the diameter figured out. Go ahead and give it a quick zero, guys. Boom, easy. This little tool is great. G-Man really hooked us up with this. I feel pretty confident with that measurement, guys. I feel it touching 100% on both sides of the jaws. I am confident that this is a 249 diameter in inches. Let's go ahead and close the caliper jaws, zero it once again, take our powder coated slug, and give her the bite. I have added four one thousandths of an inch to the diameter of this round. This round's diameter is approximately 
0.253 inches as opposed to 0.249. So if there's a question as to whether or not this is more efficiently grabbing the rifling, I think the undeniable answer is gonna be yes. If you squeeze a larger diameter projectile into a tighter space that's rifled, you are absolutely going to be making better usage of the rifling that exists within that space. Now, obviously guys, we didn't get into any accuracy testing today, but accuracy testing is online in the near future. We are going to be exploring this theory further and seeing if there are some additional benefits as far as the accuracy is concerned in addition to the power. All right, guys, I think this will be a great place to end today's video. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more with that notifications button so that you can stay current on the channel as well as when new videos come out. If you really like this video, make sure you share it so other people can see it, and I'll catch you in the next one.